Okay. Uh, 5.7, we're jumping around a little bit, talks all about the Pythagorean Theorem, which we've talked extensively about this year, and today we are going to talk more about why it is so awesome. So we're going to use the Pythagorean Theorem to find side lengths of triangles, which we've been doing all year, and we're also going to use um, Pythagorean inequalities to classify triangles as acute, obtuse, or right. So those are our main objectives for today. So the first thing we're doing is we're just going back and reviewing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the two legs of a triangle, if you uh, square them and, and add them together, should always equal the hypotenuse squared, just for right triangles, okay? Um, the only difference between what we've been doing all year and what we're doing today is we're going to remind ourselves what simplest radical form is. So you guys are well aware that when I'm asking you to find the hypotenuse of, of a right triangle, you're going to take the two, two squ uh, legs and square them. So 2 squared is 4, 6 squared is 36, and then we add them together and we get 40 equals x squared, and then we take the square root of 40. And you guys, uh, up until now, I've said this is okay, or you pop it into your calculator and tell me what the decimal is. Well, now they want us to do the simplest radical form. And to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to break it down into a prime factor tree. Prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. I don't think you need to go any higher than that, but <clears throat> there are more. So prime numbers are numbers that can only be divided by 1 in itself. And 1 is not a prime number. So, it, can I divide 40 by any of these numbers? Well, yeah, I can divide 40 by 5. So, I could say 5 times 8. There are lots of ways to do these factor trees. They're always going to come, prime factor trees, there's always going to come down to the same thing. 8 is not a prime number, so you keep going. 8 can be divided by 2 and 4. 2 is a prime number. 4 is not, so you keep going. 4 can be divided into 2 and 2. So, now here are my prime numbers. All right? I have broken 40 down into its prime numbers, and I'm almost done. What you're going to do once you have your prime numbers, you look just at your prime numbers, and you look for any pairs. Here's a couple of twos. I say that they're going out on a date. They're a couple, so they're going to go out together. This 5 doesn't have a pair. It's a loner. It's going to stay inside the radical and do geometry homework. This 2, also a loner, doesn't have a pair. It's going to stay inside and do geometry homework. So the pairs go out together as one. The loners stay inside. And when you have more than one of anything, you're going to multiply it. So radical 40 is really 2 radical 10. And if you're not sure, plug this into your calculator. If you plug this into your calculator, you're going to get about 6.3, 6.32. If you plug 2 radical 10 into your calculator, you're going to get, oh my gosh, the same thing same thing, 6.32. So 2 radical 10 is what I want from you now. We want to break it down into simplest radical form. Okay? So let's try that one more time, because we know how to do Pythagorean's theorem. Um, okay, so we want to find out what x is. So uh, 4 squared plus 8 squared equals x squared. 4 squared is 16. 8 squared is 64. Uh, add those two up together and we get 80 equals x squared. Now we want to do the radical of 80. So you can break these down as many ways as you want. I'm going to choose 8 and 10. And then 10 I know is 2 and 4. And 4 is 2 and 2. And 10 is 2 and 5. Okay, so now here are all of my prime numbers. So these are the only ones I'm looking for. I'm going to look for pairs. Here's a pair of 2's. They go out together. Here's a pair of 2's. They also go out together. Here's the loner stays inside the radical. So my answer is going to be 4 radical 5. Not radical 80, 4 radical 5. Okay. There, um, the problems that you're going to see tonight are going to get a little bit harder because we've been doing this since, first, since chapter 1. So this one is a little bit harder than the first two because now we have x's in two, uh, on two side lengths, but we're going to still do the same thing. One leg squared plus another leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And this, if you guys came from Tom Desert Charter, <clears throat> this looks like this. You could do the box if you wanted to. You should have three terms. You should not have two terms. When you actually um, find, find it out, 
x times negative 2 is negative 2x, x times negative 2 is negative 2x. These combine to be negative 4x, and negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Most people forget this middle term, and then they'll get the answer wrong. Do not forget that we usually will have three terms when we multiply binomials together. So this is x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay? If you need help multiplying this out, come to tutoring. Then we have 4 squared is 16 equals x squared. Okay, so we have an x squared and we have an x, so we need to move, um, we can move everything to the same side, so subtract an x squared, subtract an x squared, oh my gosh, they cancel out, and now I have negative 4x plus 20 equals 0, if I move this over, negative 4x equals negative 20, and x equals 5. In this case, there was no need to put it in simplest radical form, x equals 5, we're done. Simplest radical form means I don't want to make decimals, basically. All right, so here is another one for you guys to try. Pause the video and see if you can do this question on your own. Same concepts. Okay. So we have x squared, oops. We have leg squared plus another leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. <clears throat> and this is going to be x squared plus 144 equals x squared plus 8x plus 16. If you don't like to do the box, another way, x plus 4 times x plus 4, you can do FOIL, so x times x is x squared, x times 4 is 4x, four, 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 4 is 16. So we have x squared plus 8x plus 16, which is what I had over here. Alright, so we're going to subtract the x squareds, and they're going to cancel out again, and then I can subtract a 16, subtract a 16, I'm going to get 8x equals 16, 128, and then divide both sides by 8, and I get x equals 16. So if you got that awesome job, there are going to be some harder questions that I give you, that you're going to see in your homework. Um, the next day, and we'll go over those in class, but just to give you a heads up, what you're going to see on your homework in class is going to be two right triangles pushed together, and they're going to give you, let's say they give you radical, radical 34 here, whoa, I know, right, and three here, and 11 here, and x here, and they want, obviously, to figure out what x is. Well, this is a right triangle as well, if this is a right triangle, um, because they're a linear pair. And in order to find out what x is, we need to know what this side length is. And in order to find this side length, we have to first look at this triangle. So I'll call this y. We first need to find out what y is. So we do y squared plus 3 squared equals radical 34 squared. And does anybody want to guess what radical 34 squared is going to be? Radical 34 times radical 34 basically gets rid of the um, uh, radical, and your answer is just going to be the whole 34. Just, uh, just a whole, whatever number is underneath the radical sign, that's going to be your answer. So we're going to have y squared plus 9 equals 34. Subtract 9, we're going to have y squared equals, what, 25? And then y equals 5. It has to be plus 5, not minus 5, because we're talking about a side length of a triangle. So now we know y equals 5, and now you can figure out, do Pythagorean theorem one more time, and figure out what x equals. So that's just an example of a harder question you might see tomorrow during, in class. Okay, so that's all Pythagorean's theorem. Last thing I want to talk about before I pause the video is Pythagorean triples. A Pythagorean triple is when all the three sides of a triangle are whole numbers. So this is for right triangles only. So the most common example that we've talked about so far in class are the 3, 4, 5s. And what happens, do you think, if you multiply every single side by 2? Oh my gosh, we're going to get another Pythagorean triple, the 6, 8, 10. And what happens if you think you multiply everything by 3? Oh my gosh, you're going to get another Pythagorean triple, the 9, 12, 15. So if you take this basic 3, 4, 5, and you multiply um, each side by a common factor, by a common number, you're going to get another Pythagorean triple. These are all different triangles where their side lengths are whole numbers and they're, it's a right triangle. So that's called a Pythagorean triple. So really quickly, some examples. If, we, if I wanted to know 
if this is a Pythagorean triple, we have to figure out what the missing side length is first. So you still have to go through and do Pythagorean's theorem, 14 squared plus 48 squared equals c squared, and solve. So 14 squared is 196, and 48 squared is 2,304. Add those two up, and you get 2,500. And if you square root it, you're going to get... 50. So since all these are whole numbers, we have 50, we have 48, and we have 14. Yes, this is a Pythagorean triple. Okay, same thing over here. This one we have a leg is missing. So 4 squared plus b squared equals 12 squared. 4 squared is 16. 12 squared is 144. Subtract, and we get b squared equals 128. And if you square root this, you're going to get a decimal. Um, and since that's not a whole number, or you can even break this down into a simplified radical, but since this is a decimal, this is not a Pythag Pythagorean triple. And if you just look at this last one, we have a decimal already, so no, this is not a Pythagorean triple. So not, not, yes, is a Pythagorean triple. So um, that's mainly what we're going to be doing today, and um, I'm going to, the next video we're going to talk about how we can use Pythagorean's theorem to classify triangles.